I'm Elena, and I have to tell you, it was one of my biggest dreams to be a TED speaker. So my reaction when I was invited to be a TEDx youth speaker was, finally, <laughs> it's happening. Then it came the question, what are you going to talk about? Oh, silence. <laughs> they saw the silence and then they told me, okay, maybe this will help you. The theme is change makers. <gasps> and then I was like, great, change makers. Like, I have on my desktop, one of the uh, quotes I have on my desktop is, we cannot not change the world. So I live with this every day. I should be knowing a thing or two about change makers. But then I went back to my computer, looking at the quote, asking myself, what is a change maker again? Because, okay, we're here to talk about change makers, but what is a change maker? And of course, I started talking to people, asking around, because I don't want to be the kind of person that thinks they have an answer to everything. So I ask. I asked my friends, I asked people I work with, and, well, I got different answers, some of them very theoretical, some of them full of passion. But in the end, I came to the conclusion that, from my point of view at least, a change maker is everyone. I mean, every person is a change maker. It's just that not everyone changes their environment, their community for the best or for the better. There's some of us that really have a positive impact and there's others that wait for the positive impact to come. But still, that is a change. When you decide not to do anything, that's also a change. Now, talking about good or bad is very relative and I don't wanna go, get, go into that conversation. But talking about change makers and thinking about it made, made me also come to the conclusion that the change makers I applaud and the change makers I look for in my community around myself are first of all the people that are able to make a change for themselves. And these are the people that I want to talk about. Because in my opinion, unless you are able to make a conscious decision about how you want your life to be, you cannot be a change maker for the community you live in. And this is the hypothesis I'm going to start from. Now, looking around at the change makers that fit this description, I figured there are three questions that these people answered in order to really have a, a, a very conscious decision about their lives. And I'm gonna share these questions with you. It's three of them. First of all, it's what gives you energy? What are those activities that really fill your day? Those activities that you could do over and over again and you never get tired because you get out of it fuller of energy than you entered. What are those activities that feed your energy? And once you find the answer to that question, just enjoy as much as you can. Then there was the second question, which is, what do you want to be known for? What are your superpowers? And I know, you know, there was a, a joke about children that uh, read all the magazine with uh, superheroes. And uh, everyone says, well, they're action figures or they're fictional characters. Well, no. For children, superheroes are options. So, in my opinion, just because we grow up, doesn't mean we don't have our superpowers with us anymore. And I, I invite you to investigate what is your superpower? What do you want to be known for? What is your ta ta -ra -ra <laughs> call to action? And then there's the third question. What is your kryptonite? 
what is that thing that kills your power? That thing that leaves you on your knees? For this puppy, it's a bath. I don't know what's for you guys, but it's also important to figure this out. And I say that because, of course, I didn't ask myself these questions early enough. Therefore, starting from my personal history, I, I had a very regular live stream, so to say. Meaning, I always walked the, full, the footsteps uh, drawn by other people. I, I was the perfect, average, good kid. And it's going to be, I, I have to pinpoint this, it's going to be a major disclosure what I'm going to do right now, with pictures attached. So please bear with me. Uh, I was your average good kid. And there's pictures to prove that. That was me. <laughs> now, if you imagine my parents did that to me and I did not cry, <laughs> I was your average good kid. Then I was your average good student, of course, always with your diploma and uh, all the good grades and everything, trying my best to be on top of my class. Perfect footsteps, not mine, but still. Then I was the perfect employee, because of course I got a job, and they rewarded me with a diploma. Hello, you're a good employee. Great. Again, walking the footsteps of somebody else. Because that was not my decision. It was not a conscious decision of what I want my life to be. So of course, life had to give me a wake up call. And it did. Because at one point in this, what seemed to be quite a peaceful story of my life, something happened, meaning the economic depression started and of course my company the company i worked for started to change things and at one point of course they had to also change the number of their employees so while i was i was in my car in the center of the city and i received a call from my boss he asked me where are you i i said i'm in the car said, OK, pull over. <laughs> There's something I have to tell you. OK, I pulled over. And he tells me, well, we had our management meeting. And we decided to externalize all our trainers. So basically, all of the trainers are going to be jobless, with the option of still working project-based if the chance appears. That's what, that was my line of thoughts. <laughs> OK. Um, now what? Said, OK, we're going to meet at the office, talk about what's going to come up next. But this is the situation here. Now, uh, collaborator. Collaborator on what? Because there were no projects. But still, I was a collaborator. Sounded better than being unemployed. So I closed the phone and started the engine and looked at the street. And I realized I had no idea where I wanted to go. Physically, metaphorically, every way you want to put it, I had no idea what the hell am I going to do with my life. Because I had absolutely no, no flags telling me this is a good thing, this is a bad thing. I was lost. And suddenly, what seemed to be a perfect story that had also a security bubble around it snapped. My security bubble snapped. And I felt so lost and so anxious and so depressed and so small. And I had no answers. <laughs> And of course, it was a long, at least it felt for me <laughs> and for the ones around me, quite long, a period of time when um, I was not very keen on waking up in the morning. 
and I did not know what to do with the day ahead of me. And all I ever wished for during the, that time was to have a job. Just, God, please give me a job. That was all I was able to articulate, a job. I need a job and then sun will come up, birds will sing, everything will be perfect. I just need a job. And of course, careful what you wish for, you might get it. A friend of mine, luck enough, a training manager in a company here in Romania, said, okay, we have an, op an opening, you can come and work with us, a big, a big company here. And I was, this is my chance, this is great. So all my worries are over, this is it. I go to the interview, all friendly people, they were like, oh, we were waiting for you. Of course, my friend told them about me. So welcoming, we can't wait to work with you, excellent. And of course, I was already starting to think how is gonna be my day working there. These are my colleagues, future colleagues, this is gonna be great. And then when I get out of the building, I see there's a card with which you check in and you check out to get in and out of the building, you know, like in big, big corporate buildings. And I suddenly choked. Now, you would think it's a small thing, and I agree with you. I mean, millions of people do that, check in and check out of corporate buildings all the time. I get it. It's just that I never imagined myself do that. And I was so not ready to work in an organization that I felt would control me this much. And I, I suddenly realized I have no idea what I want for. Because I was there applying for a job that I did not want, not knowing I don't want it, and even more hoping I will get it. <laughs> and living there, of course, I asked myself those three questions I told you about. What gives me energy? What makes me be a happy puppy? And I realized my eternal source of energy is people. It's talking to people and growing with people, learning together and discovering each other and also discovering our shiny eyes, to go to the title. Because I, there's a kind of energy that lights up our eyes. And that's the kind of energy that I look for in an interaction with somebody. And that's what gives me energy. Then, of course, I asked myself, okay, what's my superpower? And I discovered, well, given the fact that I love to work with people, I called my, my superpower, and wait for it, <laughs> the magic of recreation. <laughs> Why? Because I want to catalyze processes or environments where people can reinvent themselves, rediscover, rediscover themselves. And get in touch with that kind of energy we were talking about earlier. And that would be my superpower. And of course, my kryptonite, control. I cannot work, I am not prepared <laughs> to work in an environment that would try to control me. So of course, what to do? Create your own environment, create your own system that would not control you, you control the system. Which I did. and. Uh, Funny enough, my company is called Life After Work <laughs> because, well, it happened after work, <laughs> after I finished working and started really enjoying my life. And uh, during all these years of working with people, interacting with them, I met a lot of people. And um, I've met a lot of people that, in my opinion, are great people. People who lost their colors. People who do every day the same thing, not knowing why they do it or till when. In my opinion, people who just feel a suit and who are second characters in their own movie. And these are the people 
that I would like to see as change makers. Because if they can change something for themselves, I bet they can change something for a lot of us. Now, becoming more and more interested in this topic and how can people really get to this change-making place, I discovered there are actually four levels of learning. There is the first level, which is learning to know. It's basically all your academic studies, everything that you do in order to become smarter in your head. <laughs> then there's the learning to do, everything that you learn in order to become a better professional, activities that make you better at work. Then there's the third level, which is learning to be. Learning to become the person you want to be. Learning how to always improve yourself. Then there's the fourth level, which is learning to live together. Now, all these four levels, and you can find them online if you're curious about it, it's called the LI uh, Research. It uh, was made by UNESCO. And it gives you an overview of how these four levels of learning are found in all of the countries in Europe. And here is Romania. Romania, as you can see, it's last at all four levels. Now, in my opinion, we are still OK with the first two, learning to know and learning to do. We're, we're still kind of OK with that. Still needs improvement, of course, but let's at least look at what's good out there. And uh, there's the last two that we really need to work on learning to be and learning to live together. And there's a quote that I would like to share with you because my time is almost done. Uh, a quote by Marianne Williamson. I know there's a lot of text. Focus on the picture and I will read it to you. <laughs> it says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Because as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And as we let our own light shine, you will see it in everyone's eyes. And this is my invitation to you to look for and generate around you as many shiny eyes as possible.